Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very romantic episode of One Great History, the podcast all about Winnipeg's great and not-so-great history. We're doing a Valentine's Day special today, which should be very exciting, but I had uh, texted Alex earlier in the week about what we wanted to talk about at the start of the episode, and I had suggested bad dates, (laughs) and then Alex reminded me that I'm actually the only one who has that many bad dates in a row. (laughs) And Alex's oh, dating history is shockingly normal. I could talk about some bad dates. Yeah, I, I, I was assumed like, you would probably be okay, too. I have spent my whole week trying to think of, like, really fun bad dates I've had or, like, even, like, how to, like, oomph up some of the, like, dates I've had so they'd be fun stories. But, like, none of my dates are that bad. It's just, like, a guy showed up late. He... The only thing I could think of was that I definitely very much offended a guy one time. Um, (laughs) So (laughs) it was like kind of awkward. So I was like, okay, let's like go for a walk. And we were walking. We got to this like dark park. And I said something about like, like feeling unsafe or something like that. And he was like, oh, I'll protect you. And I was like, oh, no, I meant like from you. Like I I feel in (laughs) danger, like because of you. And... (laughs) I think he did not get or like that. (laughs) No, I can see why he wouldn't like that. (laughs) No, but it's true. I mean, my, my, in that case, the most dangerous thing to me was not a random stranger in the park. It was the man I was on a first date with. (laughs) Yeah. Turns out men do not like when you say that, though. No, no, probably not. Yeah, but no, other than that, it's just been like slightly awkward things. And mine have been, I think, all verging on disasters. Uh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) so i had to like whittle down a list yeah you sent me earlier this week a list of like a dozen (laughs) yeah there's a lot of them they're not good i would say probably the one that gets the most talked about with my friends though is um a date where i gave a guy two allergic reactions (laughs) (laughs) over the course of the evening (laughs) yeah and that was which was and that was a guy you liked too which i think makes it worse yeah, so the fa- this was the second date. The first date went really well. We liked each other. And then we were going to do a dinner date at my place. And he came over. He helped me make dinner. He cut his thumb while making dinner. <laughs> and the thing was, he was very allergic to cats. And I had three at the time. <laughs> so he came over, hopped up on Benadryl. And I had very Great. nicely like washed the pillowcases in my living room so we could watch a movie later. And then... After dinner, the Benadryl had worn off, so his eyes started to water. Oh, no. And then he started to get a rash, because he was also allergic to the laundry detergent I had used. Oh, my God. (gasps) And then I burnt the lasagna I was making for dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And it was just such a mess. Like, he left with a rash almost in tears because of the cats, and then I panicked and sent him home with leftover lasagna that was burnt. (laughs) (laughs) Was there a third date? No, we both agree that this could never happen again. <laughs> it's a great mental image of him, like, walking home with, like, a burnt lasagna, his face all, like, red and itchy, and, like, jeez. Yeah, also, he walked home. He didn't take a bus or drive. He walked back to his place. <laughs> oh, brutal. I don't know if I told you about this date, but I went on a date with a racist. <laughs> he was bad I didn't at know being... he was racist until the date started. <laughs> Uh, he made a racist joke in the first, like, ten minutes, and I was like, this is not a good start. Who does that on But I'm date? already here. I don't know. The, like, it was, I would say, dubiously racist. It was, my sister's cat is black and fast, so we call him Usain Bolt. And I was like, I don't like this joke. That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. And then he complained about kids not, like, knowing what was good for them anymore, despite not knowing literally any kids. Weird. So he was just like... And then told me... Was he just riffing on what he'd heard on, like, some morning show, maybe? (laughs) I think so. Well, he seemed like a weird libertarian. He told me he liked to listen to Joe Rogan, and I was like, oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. I remember leaving the date to go to a bathroom and texting my friends being like, I think this guy's a libertarian. I need to get out of this date. (laughs) Oh, man. His other weird comment, he tried to debate me on stuff, which wasn't fun. That's not what you want from a date. He was like, are you in favor of, like... No, but, like, are you in favor of mining regulations? And I was like, yes, because I care about the environment and I I like to live on this earth, yes. And then he told me that mining regulations uh, ruined 
family-owned mining businesses. <laughs> a thing that doesn't exist. <laughs> All those, like, one... I'm just... Okay, but, like... Does he think it's like the Klondike, like the gold rush? Like there's all these just like single like <laughs> prospectors know. with a with like a pickaxe who are going up there and it's like uh, yeah. those mining regulations. They're really getting little little Joe pickaxe there. Yeah, little Ma and Pa <laughs> mining companies with their Yosemite God. Sam beards. It was oh, so weird. I ended that date early by picking a walking trail that would lead back to my apartment, but I didn't want him to walk me home all the way. So I was like, oh, like, I have to stop by the store and just pick up some stuff for lunch. I'm out of apples, so I'm going to do that before I go to my place, hoping he would leave me <laughs> alone at the store. <laughs> and then he followed me in to the store, and I had to buy apples, despite having bought apples the day before. <laughs> so I owned way too many apples for the rest of that week. I think I made, like, an apple crisp out of it or something. It was, it was a lot. Oh, man. I, uh, I'm trying to figure out, like, because I've been on... Also, number one, I haven't been on a date in a long time because I've been with my wife for 14 years now. And okay. number yeah. two, yeah. like I dated a lot and a lot of girlfriends and went on a lot of <laughs> dates before her. Um, but the two I'm thinking, no, one, without going into too much detail about the date itself, uh, she told me she loved me on the first date. Oh, yikes. Which was a Ooh. lot uh, and a bit of a red flag. <laughs> um, but yeah. My, yeah. my favorite was there was when I was a TA in the film department, I would be working away on, on my computer in the editing lab and there was a film student in there and I would like, I'd be editing away with my headphones on focus on the computer. And I would look down at where my jacket was and she had like snuggled into my jacket. Oh. And she, oh. I was like, what are you doing there? And she's like, Oh, I like, I was watching you work and I fell asleep. It was so relaxing. And I was like, that's a little weird, but it's kind of cute, I guess. And I guess. Yeah. so like we went, we went on a date and we're at like moxies or something like it's just like very casual like first date thing and the waitress comes up and it turns out she knows the waitress and the waitress is like oh happy birthday and the girl's <gasps> like thanks and i was like it's your birthday oh my god and she's like yeah and i was like so when i asked you like just casually like do you want to get dinner tonight like you didn't have any birthday plans or anything <laughs> she's like no no like and I was like, that's so, that's so strange. And it just like, it was just strange thing after strange thing. We were like, just kind of casually dating. And then I went away for a weekend, um, some, some like car show thing with my dad. And I came back and my buddy in the one film class, I, the other film class I was TAing was like, Hey man, I'm sorry. Like, were you dating this girl? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, we we're kind of dating. Why? He's like, Oh, he's like, I didn't know. I slept with her this week. Oh. <laughs> so she, she went from like falling asleep, watching me work and being like adorable to being like weird to being like just kind of slutty and like sleeping with my friends. And like, yeah, it was that was a weird situation. But yeah, that's that's all around. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah. Yeah, I could also talk about the girl I dated for a year whose ex-boyfriend lived with her and her family, but that's a whole other podcast. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I could probably fill a whole episode yeah. <laughs> with just dating misadventures if I really wanted to put the effort into it. <laughs> Which I think is kind of fitting for what we're actually going to be talking about this episode, because we are going to be talking about advice columns Yay. Wow. from way back when. <laughs> So, like, obviously today you can write to Miss Lonely Hearts in the free press or go online because there's, I think, 80,000 relationship forums on the internet. But that wasn't really an option in Winnipeg a hundred years ago, so you'd write to the Winnipeg Tribune. Right. Where they had the one and only Miss Betty Vincent. Oh. Uh -huh. So, she like, was the Was that her real name or did she have, like, a, like, pen name? I don't know. I oh. don't know anything about her. There's no information. <laughs> like it could have been the many issue... people being Betty Vincent, but we yeah. know, we know right now like Miss Lonely Hearts is one woman in in Winnipeg yes. at the Free Press. I've seen her at a party before. Mm -hmm. I know who she is. She uh but... she, she works with my wife and she oh. always gives Valentines out on Valentine's Day. Oh, that's cute. Well. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, so uh, we don't really know a whole lot about who Betty Vincent really was. She lived in Vancouver for a bit, based on some comments she would make in her articles. But she lived in Manitoba as well. I think she may have been a teacher at some point. It's hmm. unclear. She's not very, like, forthcoming about who she is as a person, which makes sense. You don't want people knowing who you are when you're trying to give relationship advice. Yeah. 
but the column ran pretty steadily from about 1921 until 1930. It was called Problems of the Heart. <laughs> and this was actually That's not cute. her uh, first column in Winnipeg. Her first had been Advice to Lovers, which ran in about 1914 to 1916. But she bounced around a bit because she also wrote briefly for the New York Times. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, so there's I, have some, to, like, I have to say that's a little bit of a drop to go from New York Times to the Winnipeg Tribune. Yeah, maybe <laughs> less work, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I have to assume the workload in Manitoba in 1920 is a little easier than New York in the same year. <laughs> so many love troubles in New York. Probably. <laughs> so generally, um, Betty Vincent focused on dating advice, but there was also family advice and career advice. And the one really interesting I noticed when reading through these columns is that she was actually pretty forward thinking in some ways and then very not forward thinking in others, <laughs> which we'll see as we go through some of the columns. I mean, I'm curious I'm to see what the standard, what the standard for forward thinking is for like the 1920s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll be a fun surprise for you like, guys. Like women think. voting is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like Scandalous. logic. <laughs> it's fine I mean, to basically. see a woman's knees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what would be fun is if I read the questions out to you guys and make you guess what you think her answer is going to be. Okay. Should we also give oh. our own our own advice to these hundred year old people? <laughs> if you think it's worthwhile, these people are all probably dead. I will say you're not helping anyone. <laughs> Well, in case our listeners have similar problems to yeah. these people from a yeah. from hundred years ago. There, there may be some overlap, but probably not as much <laughs> as you might think. I will say there was a lot of like normal advice, like I want to meet boys, but the answers are always like, go to a club, right. take up a sport. It wasn't like really exciting to talk about on a podcast. <laughs> so I really whittled it down to the ones that I thought were weird or interesting. So don't take these as the norm necessarily. <laughs> But the one thing I do want to talk about before we start getting into the questions is that once I started looking into um, problems of the heart, I started thinking about why we do this at all. Right. Like, writing to a newspaper column is a process that takes weeks. Mm -hmm. It's not, yeah. like, quick, easy advice when you could go to a friend. It's it's a weird way to get things. Yeah, I can't imagine so generally it's that history useful either, because, like, they might not and probably will not answer your question. No, and you will see that sometimes the advice is not as helpful as you want it to be. <laughs> would be the other thing I would give. Um, but what I did learn is that advice columns have been around since about 1690. Oh. Whoa! What? Like, specifically the version in newspapers, yeah. So, um, in London, a paper called The Athenian Mercury was published, and it was a men's column, or men's paper, but they gave advice to whoever wrote in, and because it differed then, say, like, etiquette guides and how you got your advice, it became a really popular genre. Like, if you take out a book on etiquette, it is fixed, right. it is stationary, you can't get, like, feedback to your specific situation, and it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Whereas advice columns are sort of a reflection of that, like, time and that year and that month, and it's an open dialogue of how social norms are shaped. Right. So you can learn a lot about, say, like, dating and society through these columns if you want to take the time to go through them. And the other quick note is that there's going to be some uh, fun old-fashioned terms coming in. So um, if All you right. hear the word petting, it means, like, making out. <laughs> petting is just making out. Heavy petting. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. And then necking is the same thing. It's just, like, It's not just, like, rubbing out. your necks there's together. And there's... No, but that is what it sounds like, and that is a funnier <laughs> mental image. <laughs> So I think we're going to work through these uh, partially chronologically. So we're going to start actually in 1914 with advice to lovers. And this was from December of 1914. The letter reads, Six months ago I became engaged to a young man whom I care a great deal for. A few months ago he broke the engagement saying that he thought he was not doing right by another young lady who had been receiving his attention for the past six years. I feel Whoa. very badly over it and the only thing that gives me pleasure is when he writes or phones as he very often does both. Do you think I am doing right by receiving such from a man under his conditions as he is now married? Please advise me. Signed, Anxious. <laughs> oh, so I feel like she buried the lead there. That the guy is, yeah. is not just married. like promised to another. He's fully married. <laughs> I don't know what fully mm -hmm. married means as opposed to like... <laughs> I'm partially married. Like, yeah. I'm half married. Yeah. I think partially married is being engaged. Yes, maybe. I think that's what I mean. 
It's so, not just promise rings. It's yeah. fully married. People watch them fully share married. vows. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I would think that the advice would be stop, stop writing to the married man. Uh, you'd be right, but the answer is much more brief than that. Oh, okay. The answer is just no. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have a word count she had to fill out, just no. Yeah, yeah, I would... Uh, no. I would I would recommend no. She's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I appreciate that. The answer is no. And not unlike it's the song so from Sesame Street. So blunt and to the point. Um, yeah, sometimes <laughs> one thing that my boyfriend says is no is a complete sentence. Which I yes. appreciate. Yep. And Betty Vincent subscribed to this belief wholeheartedly <laughs> in her advice. She There are a few I found that were just like one word, no answers. <laughs> wow. That, which I really appreciate. That makes me think that she actually was answering like a fair number of the things sent to her. She would write to some of them privately too, based on the things she would add in the columns. Oh. If like the situation was urgent enough or like demanded privacy okay but imagine if so like you get a letter at your house from like miss lonely hearts <laughs> and you're says you're no and your and your husband is like what is that you're yeah. like nothing <laughs> it's, my, oh, it's no. my my business this comes in a brown envelope clearly marked not from miss lonely hearts yes <laughs> Not is underlined twice, so yeah. you know it's not from yeah. her. No, no, it says it's not from Miss Lonely Hearts. <laughs> this is from my sister. Yeah, and, it's and like not sister about our marital I... problems. <laughs> in air quotes. Yeah, well, I think that's like All Sabrina. Right, so we're when... move into... oh. Sorry, I was just gonna say when like you and I were chatting about like why people no. would use um, like advice columns too. I think we were kind of saying that that might be part of it. Is like you can kind of couch your issue in like anonymous terms and whereas like if you ask your friend yeah they're gonna know what's going on and maybe gossip about it or whatever if you write into the newspaper it's more yeah. anonymous right yeah and you do occasionally get feedback from other people too yeah have, so there's options here have either of you ever it kind of makes sense it's not the most convenient way have you have either of you ever written no. into an advice columnist or called um, into a Actually, no. actually, yes. My problems are too weird and specific. <laughs> what? As, <laughs> but what? <laughs> um, as a teenager, um, there was like, it was like a teen, like online advice column. Uh, I can't even remember totally what my question was. I think it was basically like, there was a boy and we had both been like flirting with each other, but like, how do I know if he really likes me? It was like very, <laughs> very. That's very cute, actually. Yeah, I think. But okay, the advice though that I got, I think, was kind of terrible, um, which was, <laughs> which was to um, ask him out, but pretend pretend it was like a game or like a joke. Like, what <laughs> oh, would you? No, like, that's bad advice. Yeah, yeah, like what would you do if I asked you out? <laughs> That sounds like a sitcom. At that point. And someone will it take does. it the wrong That's how way. It's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I never called yeah, into anything, okay. but there used to be like a radio show called Rona at Night that people would call in and ask like relationship advice. And I listened to that pretty religiously. And then there was also the Sunday Night Sex Show. Oh. You ever see that one? Where oh, it was no. an old lady named Sue. No. And she was like, she had all the answers. Like even on the original Degrassi, they called into Sue um, oh. asking about wet oh. dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah no i never Interesting. never got up the nerve to call into anything like that people would come to me for for advice on relationships and stuff but no <laughs> okay sabrina what's what's next on uh yeah. on, on the okay, list okay next here? is 1915 okay and it is um dear betty vincent we subscribe to the five o'clock edition of the daily tribune and i want to make use of this column to settle a difference between two young friends of mine they are engaged, and the young man thinks it is quite right that they walk up and down the main street of the town in the evening arm in arm. <laughs> the girl objects on the grounds that it makes them conspicuous and attracts attention and perhaps some unkind remarks. He thinks that if she thought a great deal of him, she would not pay attention to such things. I agree with the girl, but I'd like your opinion on this, as I am old-fashioned in some ways. So is it right to walk up, up and down main street arm in arm with the man you are engaged to? 
I, um, I, th- I think she's just not that into you. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. I feel like if she doesn't want to be seen with you, yeah. that's a little iffy. Okay, also, I actually feel like okay, walking... Okay, no, the issue is not no, walking I... on Main Street. Arm and... it's... <laughs> I know. It's specifically arm and arm. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, first of all, I feel like walking up and down Main Street is more proper than if they were walking up and down, like, a more private street, first of yeah. all. Yeah. They're, like, in view of the public. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess this is like early dating times. I don't know, 1915, I feel like you're engaged, you can go walking without a chaperone. The walking is not the issue here. It's the it arm, the and arm, arm and arm and arm Interesting. Yeah, like, if, if someone doesn't want to, like, hold your hand or be arm and arm, then they don't want people to think you're together, they're embarrassed, they're, you make them uncomfortable type thing. It's, yeah... Like you're you're a secret boyfriend at this point, so <laughs> like oh, this is interesting yeah. because this is not what Betty Vincent says at all. Oh, really? The young lady is quite right. It is old fashioned to walk arm in arm. Oh, it's that couples that were dating didn't do that anymore. Oh. Okay, that's the issue. What do they do now? Um, I don't know. It doesn't say. <laughs> it's just it's old fashioned to walk arm in arm. Is the only advice you get. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So I thought, if anything, it was going to be like, no, that's like a little too touchy for a couple nope. who are only engaged and not fully married. Um, yep. Huh. So, like, do are we holding hands yet? I don't think so in 1915. No, but I guess maybe just not touching anymore? I don't know. Odd. What got me about this is the implication that if you're walking arm in arm with your boyfriend on the street, someone will say unkind things to you. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. That is weird. I can't imagine anything more proper than walking up and down Main Street arm in arm with your fiance. That's the yeah. most wholesome activity. People are going to say like, hey, you get a room. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe. I don't know. Where is your chaperone? So I have a second one uh, from 1915 as well, because I really liked the question. Um, E.K. writes, I am very much in love with a young man, but he is extremely homely. And my best friend tells me I shall not be happy with him on account of his looks. Please advise me. So basically, my boyfriend is super ugly. Can I be happy with him? Oh, no. I think that if, you know, beauty is skin deep, et cetera, et cetera, if he makes you laugh. And also, like, wouldn't that give you confidence to be like, hey, I'm the hot one in the relationship, you know? like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you guys actually have it basically right. Betty Vincent says, handsome is as handsome does. If you love the young man and he is a good sort, never mind his ability to take a beauty prize. <laughs> now, here's another fun etiquette one. When... um. When they meet each other on the street, should a woman speak to a boy or vice versa? So who speaks first when they see each other on the street, a man or a woman? What year is this from? 1915. No. I'm, I'm guessing that men should speak first <laughs> in 1915. I think that the woman should speak first. I think it might be improper for a man to speak to a woman without her invitation. I think Alex has it. The lady is the first to bow to show that she wishes to recognize the young man. Oh. And then he's allowed to speak to her. That's interesting. That's interesting. I, you know what? I kind of like that system. <laughs> that You're sounds gonna go convenient. You're going to bowing to men? <laughs> <laughs> or like, Alex, is it I just because you can now... You can ignore people that that's, way is what you want. That, yes, yeah. you're right. That's what I want. I, I want not, people to... I do not I bow. do not acknowledge your vow. I don't... I don't... <laughs> No, I don't recognize the court. The court acknowledges the bow. Yeah. You may proceed with your dating <laughs> argument. I mean, we could do something more modern. We could do like a head nod or like a wave instead. Yeah. Like, yes, a you may speak. Wink. Thank you. It's just a swipe right. You know, that's that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is just Bumble from <laughs> yeah, 1915. <basically. laughs> So in 1916, MD writes in to say, I am 18 and have to earn my own living, so I work in a factory. A young man who is very much in love with me is paying me attention, but objects to my working in the factory. What do you advise me to do? Uh, girl, is he ready to put a ring on that finger? Because otherwise, he has no business coming (laughs) after your job. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I'm going to say that too. Yeah, like I, my grandma still hints that uh, Jen should uh, quit working, that my wife should quit working. Really? Uh, like, yeah, it's my grandma who's oh wow, who's about uh, she's almost ninety. Uh, yeah, she's very much of that old mindset of like women shouldn't be working; they should be taking care of a home. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> say that. Uh, yeah, I, whatever whatever advice is given may not be the right advice. Is my is my idea. Okay, well, here's what Betty Vincent says. A factory is a perfectly respectable place to earn a living. If you can get a better job, take it, but don't give up your present one simply because the young man objects. Oh, good. good. I like that. That's that's pretty forward thinking. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, and yeah, I mean, she, I was being like a little very like... Very career forward. Yeah, like, I was being a little sarcastic there, but genuinely, like, if a man tells you to quit your job, especially if he is not then willing to support you, of course you don't quit your job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, every once in a while she comes forward. She's very career or pro career, it seems, in the columns. Right. I guess which makes sense since since she is, is a woman with a career. And also is advising young women about how to sort of survive in the world. Yeah. I wonder if she got if you need like to keep a job, you need to keep a job. I wonder if she got a lot of pushback from her editors about stuff like that where it's like, No, you gotta tell them to stay home and you know <laughs> it, make I don't know dinner and but yeah, but she was like, screw you, I'm a feminist in 1915. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes. Okay. All right. I guess so we'll see more worse. of that. <laughs> so we're now going to move into uh, Problems of the Heart in 1921. And uh, people would often send in a bunch of questions at once. Like if you were, say, like 16 and had a bunch of things you wanted an answer to, you just write her all of them and see what you can get an answer to. Oh, that's kind of cute. And she would answer them all. She would answer them all very briefly, as okay. seems to be Betty Vincent's tradition. So the first one I have is six questions. Okay. And they're all shorter. Number one is, what does it mean to accidentally step on someone's foot? Is there any meaning to it? <laughs> if there is, please tell me what it is. Um, I'm going to say no meaning. Well, I think yeah. that sometimes, sometimes boys are mean to girls. Like they bug them or they, they give them a bump or something and be like, I like you, but I'm, I'm a grunt and I don't know how to yeah. show it. Uh, so it could yeah. it could mean something, or it could just be like he stepped on my foot. Uh, Betty Vincent says it means nothing, <laughs> but she also just wrote the word nothing. So <laughs> there's oh man, she's no savage actually. <laughs> she's oh, it's so fun to read. These. I feel like that's written okay, by a girl two. who like a boy stepped on her foot, and she really wants the boy to like her. She's like yeah, like this is like I want him to something? be bullying me. Yeah. yeah, please tell me it means something. So, number two is, is there any meaning to blowing out a match when one of the masculine sex is holding it? If so, what is it? Oh. Um, that <laughs> da- Like, wait, like, okay, so the guy is holding the match, and the woman, like, yep. leans forward and blows it out. That does seem a little flirtatious. Yeah, a little bit. Also, we- I just but don't understand why you do that. Be- also... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> let him, like, let the man blow like, out his own match. <laughs> like lighting a cigarette for a woman is a, is a good come on, but I've never heard light blowing out a match etiquette. Like, yeah. <laughs> usually it's just like you shake out the match. Um, I don't know, unless like blowing is like about innuendo or something. But No. Uh, Betty Vincent says no. Okay. Just no. It means nothing. Um, three. Is there anything in winking? I would say that yes, there is something in winking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for sure, Betty. Why yep. not? Uh, Betty says it's rude. <laughs> it's rude to wink. <laughs> I guess it can be. But uh, I guess because it's like flirtatious, it's rude. I guess I don't know. I don't fully understand that. One. Well, because she because she doesn't say anything other than one word. Like there's no like. But yeah. why? Why, Betty? Why is it? <laughs> Have why you guys it, ever why been, do you think this? Have you guys ever been winked at? Not in a genuine way. I feel like you have to be pretty confident to wink at someone. Um, because it's, like, overtly flirtatious, right? It's one of the, like, few things you can do that's, like, not saying a thing, which is, like, I am flirting with you. I wound up dating... Yeah, I think... I wound up dating a girl in second year university. We had English class together, and we would just catch each other looking at each other. Right. And then at the uh, UW always had the like the poster sales 
and we like caught each other across the room at the poster oh, yeah. sale and then started talking about a poster. Um, and then the girl that I was dating at the time saw us talking and got really jealous. Uh, but <laughs> then I broke up with her and went, oh and went out with a girl who was looking at me in English class. <laughs> and we dated for a long time and it was fine. But yeah, yeah. No I was, I was, winked at her. I was winked at once and I have to admit it worked for me. I was like, whoa, that was like a smooth, like I almost didn't notice it wink and that was good. <laughs> I have only been winked at by my friends as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's never been that rude. It's just like a thing my friends sometimes do. What about okay, a wink? So number four on the this wink list. The wink in the gun, though. Oh, oh the yeah. The wink in the gun, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if that's flirtatious. <laughs> yeah. My, when it I feels was, less flirty to me. When I was younger, my older cousin told me that was how you get girls to like you, is give them uh. a wink in the gun. <laughs> and I, I knew pretty quickly oh, no. he was messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, wow. <laughs> that's some good older cousin advice, though. Yeah. Uh, sorry, number four. No. Number four. Is there any meaning to holding hands? Yeah, I would say that that's definitely yeah. flirtatious. Yeah. Big time. Uh, Betty Vincent says, if there were no meaning, no person would do it. Okay. Yeah. That's a good Fair. line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it right to accept presents from boys whom you know? I was given a wristwatch, but have not accepted yet till I see if it's right. Yes. Always accept gifts. Yeah, I mean, now now <laughs> girls on their OnlyFans or their Instagrams have, like, you know, here's my Amazon wish list. And, like, I remember even, like, like 15 years ago or whatever, when I was in university, there was a girl who was, like, she was, like, she was on the Suicide Girls. Like, she was oh, an yeah. adult model. And she had an Amazon yeah. wish list. And she was like, I was like, where did you get like the complete series of Lost? And she's like, it was on my Amazon wish list, and some guy bought it for me. <laughs> I was like, that's wild. Nice. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I think that if you if you want stuff, get stuff. Why not? Uh, Betty Vincent says no. You did right in refusing it. I mean, I get where she's coming from, but also, it's like take the watch. I don't know. Take that wristwatch. Yeah. Yeah. And then the final question is less to do with romance, but what is a safe tonic to use for the hair? Oh. <laughs> uh, rose water. The, uh, the good con- kind of tonic. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100 years Betty ago. Vincent can't give prescriptions. She doesn't know them. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that was a prescription. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry for giving out Apparently. medical advice. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? <laughs> So, um, she doesn't really give out any sort of health care advice, generally. Okay. Or skin care. The one thing I didn't know as a reviewer was, like, how do I get rid of my freckles? And some advice I've seen in other articles, not from Betty Vincent, have been, like, bleach your skin. Oh, mm. horrible. Or, like, equally horrifying advice. Betty Vincent actually said, don't do anything, it will damage your skin. Oh, that's nice. Which is very forward thinking. Yes. Well, and also like the newspaper doesn't want to doesn't want to get sued, right? Like someone yeah. goes out and does something yeah. irreparable to their body. <laughs> the yep. newspaper told me to do it. Yep. So we're gonna move to 1922, and a young girl reads, uh, writes in to say, "Now, dear Betty, I am a girl of 15. Should I let a boy kiss me good night, as it has often happened?" But, dear Betty, it is not my fault, for the other night, as I was coming home, this certain boy put his arms around my waist and asked me to kiss him, and as I refused, he took hold of my face and pulled it up to his and kissed me. I was very angry with him, but it made no difference. Still, he carried on his usual way. Please give me your kind advice. I would like to know, as I really love this boy. Signed, Rose. Um, do not love that boy. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds creepy. Well, we'll see what Betty Vincent says. Oh has to no, say. Betty. <laughs> you were too late in trying to stop the boy from kissing you well, after he had his arms around you. Not the cool, time Betty. for caution was before he touched you at all. I oh think God. that you are quite as much to blame as he is. <gasps> if you really object to his behavior, you will not go out with this boy again. Is she also gonna tell him or tell her not to wear short skirts and like say it was how <laughs> she was? I mean dressed? probably. Like... <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Oh, dear. oh. That's bad. I don't like that one. <laughs> no, it's not good advice. I mean, the last bit about not going out with uh, him again is good. But everything before that was terrible. Yes. 
Just don't go out with them again is really what the whole thing should have been. Yeah, like, story that happened to you. I hope your next kiss is better. Don't go out with him again. Yeah. Our next one is interesting because it's from a boy. Okay. And not a girl. I am a boy of 18 years of age, but have lately arrived in Portage. Should boys ask strange girls to skate with him at the rink? Is it proper to kiss a girl goodnight on company in your home? Would it be advisable to accept an invitation for a New Year's dinner when the husband of the home is absent? How would you advise <laughs> initiating a lady into a club? And it is signed, Hot Dog Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Hot Dog Howard! Oh my god, somehow I wasn't expecting that after the questions about, like, romantic ice skating. But that does sound like Hot the Dog name Howard. of someone who lives in Portage La Prairie, so I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean that with all the love in the world. Um, okay, so the wait <laughs> that was a lot of questions. The ice yeah. skating. Should a boy ask girls to skate with him right. at a rink? Uh, only if she bows to him first. Yeah, <laughs> we have to remember our previous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The etiquette here. Yeah. Um, it's not the proper thing to do, according to Betty. Okay. Um. How does one get a skating date, then, if one is not supposed to ask for it? I don't know. I guess maybe you make the woman's acquaintance first, and then... And then you skate. Yeah. I guess. Should you kiss a girl on accompanying her home? I think Betty's gonna say no. She says no. Okay. Apparently, unless the girl puts um, her arms around you first. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's some mixed messages. And then it's somehow in... No, no. That didn't come in, oh, that wasn't okay. in this that question, was from the but based yeah. on the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wait, that's weird, because she's like, don't kiss a girl, but then in the previous one, she's like, well, you were asking for a smooch, like... Yeah. yeah. And then... Um, can you accept an invitation to a New Year's dinner when the husband of the house is absent? <laughs> that um, sounds so... I'm gonna say definitely no. <laughs> that sounds sketchy to me. <laughs> I mean, look, if it's, like, a New Year's uh, dinner with, like, many different people, maybe. Not just, like, you and the missus. But even then, you're going to, like, show up and it's going to be, like, the guest, the other guests didn't arrive. Wink, yeah. wink. <laughs> Lots of winking. Yeah. It's rude, Nick. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> so, apparently, it's allowed if it is a dinner party. Okay. So, yeah. Basically, so, yeah, I, I think saying, other like, people if there's are lots there. of people. Yeah. And then how do you get a lady into a mixed club? I don't... I think maybe... I don't know what he means. A mixed club? So, Is that like, like a blacks the, and whites club? <laughs> like... <laughs> no, it would be men and women. A like, big way of oh. playing out then but, would like, be what in kind like... Of cl- like a curling club? <laughs> no. No, probably like a social club of some kind. Okay. But, like, why would you want to? Like, is the question, like, I want to hang out more with this girl, but, like, in a context where it's, like, socially appropriate because there are other people around, so how do I get her to join a club? Yeah, but the same club as me. I would say, (laughs) ask her if she wants to join the club. Oh, interesting. Just Um, be uh, honest and direct. (laughs) (laughs) Well, apparently the usual way to get into a club is to have a member of the club submit her application and then have another endorse it. Okay. So you need two people to get one person into a club. Uh, Clubs were weird. Yeah. We should do an episode on, like, the Shriners one time, because... Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we're moving into 1923, and um, two girls, Spotty and Dotty, write in with four (laughs) questions. Okay. (laughs) Are we too young to flirt? How old are they? 17 and 18. Okay. No, I think flirting is okay. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You can only flirt after you're married, girls. (laughs) Betty says, you are old enough to know better. Oh. Whoa. Wow. Betty, okay. (laughs) Are we too young to go to masquerade balls with boyfriends? Oh, that sounds so fun. Too young to flirt. (laughs) Yeah, I think Nick's right. If they're too young to flirt, then probably they're too young to go to a masquerade ball. They are too young, unless they are properly chaperoned. Okay. Uh, See, chaperoning... Could you imagine being chaperoned on a date? Like, it... So weird. Like, your grandma's there? Yeah. Like, that's weird. (laughs) Or, like, your mom? 
Yeah. Did you yeah. watch this season of The Crown? Like, there's chaperones on the early dates between, like, Prince Charles and Diana. Like, it's... Oh, it's so weird. And, like, they, like as far as the show goes, it's, like, they had a few dates, they never kissed, and then they were married. Like, it was just yeah. wild. Yeah, like, how do you how do you get to know a person? I guess maybe the point is you don't. Yeah. And then you're married to a jerk for the next 60 years yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I guess the next 20 years because men died younger then. But... Yeah, maybe he goes off to war or... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we both wear evening dresses to dances. Is that right? Uh, hmm. 18. No, I think they might be too young for evening dresses. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that they should be in their... You know, whatever you know, the pinafores 1920... or whatever. Yeah, 1923 equivalent of a poodle skirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were old enough to wear simple evening frocks. Ah, so, yeah. Yeah. I would say that's basically right. Oh, here's uh, one of my favorite ones from 1923. And it caused a bit of a stir in the paper at the time. Oh, okay. So, it reads, I am a girl of 19. I used to go with a boy of 19. I used to like him. He was very nice, and I thought he would be a suitable boy for me. But when I asked him to take off his hat, he never would. <laughs> One day, we went for a walk. We were walking fast. He got very hot, so he took off his hat. Oh, then I saw that he was bald-headed. From that time on, I did not like him. <laughs> he used to... <laughs> he used to kiss me so much that I got sick of it. Please, Miss Vincent, will you advise me what to do? Should I let my kisses go, or should I give him into the law's hands and make him pay for my kisses? <laughs> Please answer me. <laughs> what? Well, and it's signed, Sick of Kisses. Sick of Kisses. So she's sick of kisses. She found out he's a lying bald man, and she wants to have him arrested for yeah. kissing her too much. Yeah, hold on. What is, what what is the charge she wants going to be? be? What? For losing his hat, for being secretly bald, or for too many kisses? <laughs> for consensually kissing a woman. Yeah. But but with under fraudulent circumstances, because she did not know he was bald. <laughs> um Yeah, I I'm gonna say I don't think I don't think the law can help her here. <laughs> but you know, I like I wouldn't be happy if someone hid from me something about themselves. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I'd say lock, it would be a weird surprise. Yeah, yeah. So Betty says it could not have been a very violent love that collapsed at the sight of a bald head. <laughs> Since you say that you do not like him now, there's nothing to do, is there? But forget him, bald head and all. <laughs> and yeah. then she adds. You might as well forget the kisses at the same time, and since you do not mention having offered any particular resistance to his caresses, the chances are the law would not deal very sternly with him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's a pretty fair answer there. The law cannot help you with it's the kisses. It's very level-headed. Yeah. <laughs> with your kisses. Like, do you think that? But do you think that kisses are ever being used here as like a euphemism for something more? Uh, like people are it's hiding possible. that they've actually slept together. Yeah, yeah. Because like obviously yeah. the law is not going to come after a guy for kisses, but you know there could be circumstances where it might for for you know actual sexual activity or whatever. Yeah. Okay, but that's implying that they had actual sex with his hat on. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't think of that. You're right. <laughs> Leave the hat on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, maybe when she it's said like, like maybe when she said like too. a strong gust of wind, what it actually was was that they were like partway through and the hat came off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she realized. Yeah. Well, she the, realized she had been duped. Like you're not even supposed to wear a hat indoors though, right? Like in in that time, like even my my grandma's boyfriend, he tells me to take my hat off if I'm indoors at the cabin. And it's like, "Okay, Jack, yeah, I'm going to take my hat off." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a very odd question. So it causes a stir in the newspaper, you said? <laughs> yeah, so people actually write follow-ups on their opinions on what Sick of Kisses has done. Oh, wow. One writes in to say, I think, I think Sick of Kisses should be ashamed of herself for letting a man she didn't love kiss her like that. Oh. I kept my kisses until I met the man I loved. <laughs> wow. <laughs> kisses are for marriage. And then uh, someone wrote a really long thing about wanting waiting to kiss her husband despite her not being beautiful 
which wasn't <laughs> worth it to type up. It was really long, okay. and it didn't really make sense, but it was in response to Sick of Kisses. Right, so basically save and your then, kisses. Yeah. And then a boy writes in to say, in a longer thing about liking the column, I have often tried to picture the modern woman, and I would like to hand Sick of, or Miss Sick of Kisses the first prize. I am 26 years of age and have learned that girls of 19 sure do know a thing or two, and a fellow should remember the lucky day when he removed his hat. I should also like to meet a real lady who is not sick of kisses. Signed, Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the first incel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Sick of kisses replied to Dixie. Oh, okay. She wrote back. A love connection. Apparently, she writes, I would like to meet the boy who signed himself Dixie. And now I'm going to say a few words to mom and loving wife together. They shouldn't give me their advice because I don't need it. I am wow. 19 years of age and I know whatever I do. And when I need advice, I know who to ask for it. Not mom or loving wife. The poor bald head is not worth it. And that's all I have to say. I don't want to go with him any longer because I don't want him to spend so much money on me. I hope to see this printed soon. Jeez. <laughs> that feels like a very like modern like Facebook drama. Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. Like, that feels like an argument in a comment section. It's very weird. Like, what advice do you have for me? Shut up. I don't yeah. want your advice. It's also kind of funny. I didn't like, ask you, Mom. Yeah. Like, the guy who it's being written about, the, the guy who wouldn't take off his hat, that guy so clearly knows who he is and that he's being discussed by multiple people over multiple letters. <laughs> like, he's so embarrassed he's getting fitted for a wig immediately <laughs> yeah that's a very specific question <laughs> yeah yeah i think you would figure that one out pretty fast so there's one final letter in this saga and it's by someone completely unrelated to all of the earlier letters and i it's unhinged is okay. how I would describe <laughs> it. okay it starts with i'm sorry to take up your valuable space but i would sure like to accommodate miss sick of kisses and i prove it by the fact i called her at her office oh uh, of course no what miss sick of kisses I did not go there for that good talking to you promised me, but as a messenger boy, I admire you for considering the money the poor boy spends on you. From my experience with young ladies, I've known there's never been one who has refused to come to a theater with me because her ticket cost $2. I'm sorry that I was disappointed when I called on you as you were out to lunch, but I left a message for you and hope to hear from you soon as I am the kind of man who doesn't want to miss anything not even a good talking to. Signed, Percy. That's bizarre. Creepy. <laughs> It's very creepy. It's yeah. so weird. Like, presumably There's she no didn't, follow-up. Presumably she didn't have her address listed in the newspaper. How is he going to her office? I don't know. Like, did he go to the Tribune office? Mm. And, like, he intercepted is that what he the, meant? the letter. I don't know. Or maybe he knows Baldy. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's possible. There is no explanation. Miss Lonely Heart, or uh, Betty Vincent, doesn't question this. <laughs> she just prints it. That is so weird. So I have no idea what happened, but it's so strange. <laughs> so that was the very exciting year of 1923. And then we move into a 1924, where uh, two young girls who are 19 write and say, we know plenty of boys, but none that we would care to go around with, as these boys do not seem to have any ambition. But <laughs> while away on our holidays, we met two very nice boys whom we liked and who seemed to like us enough to give us a good time while we were away. We would like to see them again, but they live at the other end of the city. We were wondering if you could s suggest some ways in which we could see them. Signed, Swin Twisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so how do you, that's how do you like get in cute, touch with some boys you like had a fun a holiday with? That's like a cute teenage problem that like, oh, the boy yeah. I like lives on the other side of the city. You got to Jim yeah. and Pam that. You got to meet in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's a petrol station so, they could meet at. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably by 1924, there's at least one. Yeah. Uh, Betty Vincent says, uh, make up a theater party of girls and boys and include the lads in the party. It can be done by telephone in an informal way. Say a few of us boys and girls are making up a theater or a movie party for such and such an evening. Would you like to join us? It's not up to the boys to do the rest. Okay. I, I don't know why it's up to the boys to do the rest, but I feel like that's decent advice. Yeah. Group date, sure. Especially... Yeah, especially when you probably weren't allowed to go on, like, a date like that on your own. Yeah. Bring your friends. Make it a group hang. Group hang. That, yeah. That's much more fun than having, like, your grandma there as a chaperone. Yeah. And you get to go see a movie. Yeah. So, yeah, very level-headed, very sensible. 
probably, I would say, like, I don't know, call them and ask them out and not do a ruse, but <laughs> different times. Yeah. yeah, like, Betty Vincent really seems into, like, playing the games, you know? And it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know, just you know, cut, oh, the, yeah. cut the drama, Betty. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's part uh, of she the will whole, not. like, dance of courting, especially back then, yeah. right? Is, like, you can't you can't outwardly express your affections because that's not proper, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all like dances and games and there's a lot more rules. Until you I get think, married and then you're just like today. Thank God that I don't have to do that anymore. The fun is over once you're married. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so the other one from nineteen twenty four is from Violet, who writes, I am shy. Please, how can I overcome this shyness? I am more shy with young men than others, and they think I am queer, I know. Other men, older men don't scare me quite so much. Women and girls are not so bad either. So Violet is too shy to talk to young boys, and she would like advice on how to overcome this. Well, I'd say she should date the older men then. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, just kidding. Um, But I don't know. I don't know how one overcomes shyness. Practice, I guess. But I feel like if you're not allowed to talk to boys in the world of Betty Vincent, then I don't know. Yeah, and Betty Vincent's not going to uh, prescribe any yeah. anti-anxiety medication because she doesn't prescribe and it doesn't exist yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Just do a bunch of, like, opium and see what happens, yes. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, like, in current advice, I was a very shy, like, kid going into my teens, and then I got into theater and then tours, and that sort of forced me out of it. Yeah. But I don't know if that's for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think forcing yourself into public speaking roles is the cure for a lot of people. That yeah. it, actually, that did work for me too. But uh, yeah, do Toastmasters. That'll teach you how to talk to people. Like what? Yeah. Uh, so Betty Vincent has none of this advice. Okay. She says the young men don't think you're queer, Violet. They admire you very much, but you don't give yourself time to enjoy their admiration. Nor do you give them a chance to really get their full battery of admiration at work. You exert yourself too much. You must learn to be passive. Take the let George do it attitude towards attracting the admiration of men. Be natural and good-tempered in your everyday relationships. Okay, I I don't like learn to be passive, but yeah. I do feel like it's nice advice to be like, hey, it's okay that you're shy, boys will still like you, don't worry about that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like... Betty Vincent is answering a different question than was asked. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's very strange. Because it's basically like, oh, well, just keep being shy and then men will eventually like you. Yeah. (laughs) It's probably not what Violet wanted to hear. No, probably not. No. So we're going to jump into 1925. And a young man writes in to say, I met a young lady who I liked. I asked her if she would come to our place for a meal, and she told me she could not get off work. So I asked her again on Sunday to go for a drive, but she would not go. You see, I would like her friendship, but she does not seem to want it. I'm just wondering if it is my hearing. I had a girl, but (laughs) when she told me, she did not want to be seen going around with a deaf fellow. So I'm getting afraid to ask. I can't help being deaf, can I? Can you please tell me what to do, as I have no friends, only a mother and a father and sister at home, but I would like to keep company with a girl. Okay, so I initially thought what he meant was, am I just mishearing her when she says no? <laughs> no. Yeah, I thought that too. It's like, no. is there something wrong with my hearing? Like, Yeah. They should be saying I mean, yes. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> oh. No, he's deaf. That's sad. I feel like, yeah, yeah. That, that could be a thing, that girls might say no because you're hard of hearing. Yeah. Or, or deaf, and that sucks. Yeah. I, I'm, as, ve- I'm very nervous about what Betty Vincent is going to say, yeah. actually. <laughs> as, you, as you should be. Oh, oh, no. Her advice is, being deaf is a great handicap to anybody, and you better go <gasps> to a doctor and have your hearing examined and tested. Never mind the girls. They are just girls, but a book or a violin or a good dog in a gun are the things you want the most. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> she get like, a book called Robinson Crusoe and read it over twice and you'll find lots of enjoyment. You must get your ears examined right away, though. Okay, so what she's telling him is like, <laughs> don't don't look for a girl, read Robinson Crusoe, get a dog and a gun, and basically go like live in the forest and be a, a hermit? Because no one will yeah. love you. Yes. Like, There's no hope for you, Deffy. Yeah. Nope. Like, <laughs> oh, that's oh, awful. Dear. 
Yeah, well, you know, when when, um, when I lost my some of my hearing in my right ear, my wife did consider leaving me, so that, yeah. that checks out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I got my yeah. And then um, you did get <laughs> and then you did get a gun and read Robinson Crusoe twice, I, and now I, you're okay. I got halfway through Robinson Crusoe, and I bought a I bought a water pistol. So yeah. And you have a dog, but it's like a small dog. So I do have a dog. Yeah, yeah. So I think I'm I'm gonna be okay, uh, whether my wife leaves me or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's just such bizarre ableist advice because yeah. also presumably he has had his hearing tested. I think he knows that he's deaf. Yeah. yeah. Like, what's a doctor gonna do for you in 1925? for that i don't not much no yeah. give you one of those big like listening horns like yeah you see those in? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it's very bad advice it's so so bad uh, real mixed bag also, this like, lady deaf people can just date i don't think it's that yeah. outrageous but <laughs> also we're a hundred years away from this now thank god yeah yeah so 1925 was a slower year for some reason, so I only found one, and it's one of those ones where it seems like Betty didn't read the question and just answered something. <laughs> so, Red asks, why is it I cannot make many friends? I try to please everyone. Some say I am too reserved. That's it. Why can't Red make friends? Uh, she needs to talk to more people. Red is shy. Yeah. Is, is yeah. she going to get the same advice as Shy Girl? Oh it's yeah, a bit, good a question. Different advice. Like, stay passive. Um, girls will like you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, Betty's advice is meaner this time. Oh no. <laughs> it says you probably lack personality. <gasps> what is your personality? It is a gift the gods give at rare intervals to men and women. All children have it. They sometimes lose it when they grow up. Now, do you see what personality is? <laughs> oh, that's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, she does not like shy people. Yeah. No, she doesn't. Or, like, weakness in general. Yep. You need to be stronger. Get yourself a personality and some hearing. Betty out. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> but also, she doesn't explain what a personality is. No. She's like, some people have a it and you don't. Do you is get a it? thing that you have that you have. It's some people got it, kid, <laughs> and you ain't got it. You don't. Next, please. <laughs> And yeah, moving on. Um, in 1927, a girl asks, when a girl is engaged to a boy, can she show her affections for him too much? Should she let him see that he is sure of her? This is perhaps a foolish question, but I would like to know how a girl should act towards her fiancé. A few weeks ago, this boy came to me and asked me to marry him. He's been waiting all these years. <coughs> I find that I love him, and I have promised to marry him. So how much, how much love can you show your fiancé? Um, is what... They want to know. As we said earlier, I feel like Betty Vincent is very into, like, playing the game. I feel like she's going to suggest some, like, you know, not, like, not showing all of your love approach. Well, and you're not going to show your love by walking arm in arm because that's not cool anymore. So yeah. I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's funny, too, because there's no, like, sex advice in any of this. It's all, like, very basic, yeah. like... We're, we're, you know, decades away from sex columnists and sex in the city and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what Betty Vincent's going to say. Like, the um, other thing is that, you like, treat your... oh. sorry, I was just going to say, the other thing is that, like, no. we know that young people were having sex mm -hmm. at this time. Yeah. So it's all, like, a little bit of game of pretend, right? Where we're like, should I kiss him? Should yeah. I show him my affection? You know, like... <laughs> Yeah. It's very elaborate, dancing around what's actually going on. Yeah. Regardless, Betty Vincent thinks that you should treat your fiancé with the respect due to him. It is not wise to let your best friend know how much you really care. A fiancé and a husband are much better behaved if they are not too sure. Whoa. Dignity at all oh, times no. is admired in men and women. So <laughs> she's basically recommending, like, negging for wives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! That's basically what it is. Yeah, it's nagging for wives. Like, bring him down a peg or two. Don't tell him you like him that much. Ouch. Make him unsure about where he stands. Yeah. So, Betty Vincent also did handwriting analysis occasionally. So, people would write in to have their handwriting analyzed, and she would then say, like, you're assertive or whatnot. And sometimes she would just throw that in to her assessment of the question. Oh, so like so in this one about letters, um, right. negging your husband. Yeah, so she also adds, 
Now that you've made up your mind to marry this man, it would be wise that the wedding take place as soon as possible. You may change your mind. You are the wobbly sort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Huh. I <laughs> Get yeah. married before you change your mind. Yeah, uh, hang on. That's not great advice, is it? No. <laughs> Like, you might change your mind, therefore definitely jump into this thing and don't, like, think about it more and make sure it's right for you. No, thinking about it would be an issue, I guess. (laughs) Do you think anyone ever started to, like, question her terrible advice? Like, they're like, no, 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 she knows what she's talking about. She's in the newspaper. (laughs) No, but... I think to a certain extent, this is probably what was the norm at the time, too, right? It yeah. looks weird to us now, but it's the standard I don't think advice, Betty Vincent is challenging the status quo that much. Yeah. Um, so in 1928, um, there's a question that I think sounds very familiar to questions that you hear these days from high school girls. Um, Apple Dumpling asks, why is it that boys and men like girls who are not nice? You know what I mean, girls who oh. smoke and drink and pet, etc. Whoa. I am a high school girl, and I find that the girls who are not nice are the best liked by the boys. This has bothered me for some time, as I am a nice girl, or at least I try to be. I mean, probably because those not nice girls are more fun. <laughs> 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 you know, they're doing the smooching and the drinking. Yeah, they know how to party. They're probably yeah. doing yeah. more than smooching and drinking. <laughs> yeah it's not wrong so Betty Vincent has a slightly different take on this I'm not surprised and she says do you know I some <laughs> it's not as bad as you think it's gonna be okay do you know I sometimes think that girls spoken of as not nice or simply misunderstood girls half the co- cigarette and cocktail smartless is assumed the necking and petting business much like jazz music came in with the great war and will go out with return sanity already showing in a thousand ways <laughs> never was girlhood so splendid today never was life so filled with possibilities the girls are all right it is the times that are out of joint that's really funny i mean okay a little bit like there is a little bit of a like return to more like you know proper stuff in like mid century before, like, the sexual revolution yeah. of the 60s. But I feel like she was thinking of a shorter timeline than that. Like, within a few years, we'll be over our jazz music thing. Yeah. yeah. Smoking and jazz music but are I do fad. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Betty, how little you knew. What I do like is the take that the girls are all right. It's nice to not read, like, oh, it's like, the bad girls are being yeah. slutty and evil. that is nice. Yeah. Which I think is a rhetoric... That you still hear sometimes. Yeah. It's both, like, nice and also wrong, which is, I think, the real Betty Vincent cocktail. <laughs> yeah. Like, on yeah. one hand, Betty Betty is saying, like, women should support other women and not talk down about each other. But she's also just got some, some really wild, terrible advice, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. people exist in the and, context uh, of their times, and yeah. Enter, and yeah. enter Betty Vincent. So speaking of terrible advice... Okay. Um, in 1928, someone re- writes in to say, I am to be married to a man who I think a lot of. But what worries me is this. I have a little girl and he doesn't know. He thinks she is my sister. Miss Vincent, should I tell him? I don't know what Whoa. he would say. I think of her more as a sister than a daughter and I wouldn't like to lose him. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you definitely gotta, gotta say something. Yeah, that Oof. sounds like... I mean, we've seen that plot in TV and movies, and it never... I don't know, like, unless the guy yeah. is, like... I don't know, it's it's funny, because, like, I think about... Some guys are pushovers. And there was a guy that I, I, I worked for this guy, and he was like, I'm dating this woman, and she's pregnant by someone else, and I will raise this child. And meanwhile, the woman was like, I'm not even interested oh, in no. type thing. And that's, like... That's that's different, but it's also like like if you if you love a woman, then you know you will love her even if she lied to you and even if she has a child that you thought was her sister type thing. But it's also like that's a little messed up that she was misleading you. So it's like yeah. it's either way. It depends on the situation and like how deceptive maybe she is. But I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, that's a coin toss for me. Depends on the people. Yeah. That's a that's a big dramatic. I think it also question, depends though. on yeah, like how long have they been going yeah, out? Yeah, on like, like 
well, when did she have the baby, too? Yeah. Like, was this yeah. a teenage thing? What were yeah. the circumstances? Like, there's probably a reason she has the baby is her sister, technically. Yeah, it sounds like it may be one of these old situations where, like, yeah, she got pregnant pretty young, and then the kid may actually have been raised by her parents, essentially, as her sister, so. Yeah. Uh, so what Betty Vincent has to say is, Use your head in this matter, my dear young lady, and never under any circumstance give any man to hold such a thing as this over you. Mm. Tell no one, above all, the man you are to marry. (gasps) Oh. The thing that will most concern him now and affect him too will be your conduct after he marries you. Let this experience, bitter as it may have been, be a never-ending lesson to you. (laughs) And if the man you are to marry is good and kind and make you happy, let well enough alone. But walk the straight and narrow. There'll be no happiness otherwise. Best of luck to you. <laughs> Keep your... So lie to your husband forever. Keep oh my your god! I mean, secrets. Okay, so that's terrible advice, A. But B, I feel like to some extent, like, <laughs> lie to your husband forever was often, like, survival advice for women. Yeah. Of, like... Yeah. You will not get a husband and you will become a spinster and you can't really make enough money to, like, pay your own way if you have this thing that your husband knows about. Mm -hmm. So I was reading um, the book of Diminished War, which is the new Winnipeg history book by Jim Blanchard. And he talks a bit about Betty Vincent in it. And his theory about why some of this advice was so like conservative is that it's trying to essentially protect women. Stuff like divorces and pregnancies were much more damaging than they are today. Right. Yeah. So like, if they know she has a kid, she is ruined, essentially, would yeah. have been the rhetoric used. A divorce would be hard to survive on her own. There's not employment. So there's also lots of advice about, like, sticking out in unhappy marriages because you probably couldn't survive on your own. Yeah, so, like, that's, like... Wow. It's uh, just a different... It's, like, super crappy advice. In terms of, like, survival for women. For both of them, because, like, yeah, she's gonna have to live with that over her head. She's lying to her husband, which is awful for him. But yeah, maybe that's how a woman survives in 1928 or whatever. Ugh. Happy Valentine's yeah, Day, I mean, guys. Yeah. There's no follow-up, and it's really bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the ones where it's like, I'm in love, and what color should I wear at my wedding aren't really interesting to talk that's, about. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. In the same way. Isn't, isn't the answer <laughs> always white? Was there ever a question about what color to wear at your wedding? Uh, yeah, white, white uh, only white became wasn't the really thing. the mainstay until... Yeah, sorry, we both are, want to tell you the fun fact. I'll let Sabrina, <laughs> Please, Sabrina <yeah>. take it. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you go ahead. I feel like you know more about this than I do. No, I was just going to say that, like, white um, really didn't become a thing until, like, the Victorian era, and then only for, like, really, like, wealthy women, because ideally you want your dress to be a nice dress, but one that you can wear again. Oh, okay. So... Yeah, so it's not really into, like, later in the 20th century when, like, everyone's wearing white at their wedding. Because that's expensive to have a white dress that you can never wear again. I knew that engagement rings were a fairly modern idea that were just meant to, like, sell you another ring. Yeah. yeah, That's interesting. (laughs) Yeah, and just to sell you another dress, dress too. a fairly new idea, so. Yeah. Yeah, Well, now now if you rewear your wedding dress, uh, people are going to look at you funny, so. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll move on to a lighter question, which was written in 1929 by a boy again. I am near 15, and I haven't associated with girls very much, and I seldom go to dances. My reason is that I do not associate with the girl I really like. I know of a girl who is like me without a partner and is the style of girl I like. How must How must I be introduced? I test her love of me, although... This question is not well worded, just to be clear. I'm okay. trying to remember the grammar of this. I test her love of me, although we boys usually know who they like before being introduced. How could I introduce her without consulting my friends or introducing myself? So essentially, I'm going to try and translate this because right. it is confusingly worded. He would like to get to know a girl. Yeah. He wants to know how he can meet her without introducing himself or without having his friends force an introduction. <laughs> um, okay, get a dog. Ah. pretend pretend that your dog gets ah. off the leash near her so that she can like oh is this your dog there you go okay and winking is off the table i mean so. 
Yeah. Yeah. You can't <laughs> wink. I mean, I, I think that's introducing yourself. I think a wink is still you introducing yourself. Yeah. Um, Betty Vincent does not have any time for this question. She <laughs> oh. says, I cannot understand your aversion to a proper introduction, nor can I comprehend your wishing to test her love of you when you are not even acquainted. Yeah. That's... Cultivate her friends, and in all probability, you will be casually introduced if that's what you want. I mean, honestly, that's fair. <laughs> like, just get your friends to introduce yeah. you. It's weird bad advice. And don't, and don't try to test her love before before you know her what <laughs> i yeah well he is because like what it sounds like he's waiting for is he's testing her by waiting for her to come up to him yeah uh, but why would anyone yeah. do that that's ludicrous yeah that's my read of it at least but right. like, that's so i think dumb. i that's think you're right but that's very people. silly <laughs> i mean when i was 14 yeah. i just approached every girl so that was, I was like <laughs> hi how you doing? Hi. And I figured, like, one of these girls will like me. But yeah. <laughs> oh, I no. mean, you cast a wide enough net, yeah. right? Um, so the other one from 1929 is about a party. And it opens, The host of the party, which I was at, started a fist fight with a boy who would use profane language to a girl. Now, the girl started this profane language which referred to the boy and his friends. The host encouraged her in making them look small, which was uncalled for. This angered the boy so that he used her own language back at her. The host then became angry and he threw the boy out and beat him, thinking he was keeping order in his house. Oh. Did the host do right? Okay, wait, so what did the boy do again? So the boy, a girl was making fun of a boy. Right. And then the boy, I think, used the same language back to her and the host of the party got mad at the okay. boy swearing, but not the girl. And then he beat the boy up. I mean, I he shouldn't have beat anyone up. Yeah. But yeah. I I don't know. Boys are idiots? <laughs> yeah. Like that's yeah. yeah. I haven't been to a whole lot of parties where there are fights, but I can I, fights like this happen all the time. It's not that outrageous. No, I I do also feel like this question is written by someone who's like clearly on the side of this boy who got thrown out. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and he just he just used the same language back at her. Like I I feel skeptical that yeah. we're getting the whole story here. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is another one where I think Betty Vincent just didn't care for because her answer is. The situation you describe sounds very disgusting. If you are wise, you'll change your friends. Your problem is one I do not care to express myself upon. <gasps> oh, brutal, Betty. Fair no enough. interest. No interest in this. Like, was she not getting enough questions? Because why is she answering questions that she hates? <laughs> well, it's an example. Like, don't send me junk like this. I will not answer it. I, I don't care. That's fair. Yeah. 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 Or it's, like, it's scandalous reading, right? Yeah. If there's an editor who wants there to be exciting drama in the yeah. column outside of, like, read my handwriting, do I sound nice? <laughs> yeah. This is it. We need more loving and fighting. And, like, who knows? Like, maybe they're, like, making fake questions to write into yeah. people, you know? It's definitely possible, yeah. Yeah, yeah on a slow week, why not, um, right? So we're going to move into the last year of the column, All 1930. Right. And I've got two from this one. Um. I am a mother of two children, and my husband left us about six months ago. Oh. He goes out with different girls and has a good time. Betty, he comes to see us once in a while. He said I should give one of my babies to him. <laughs> I hate to part them because they love each other. <laughs> what should I do? Should I wait for him until he gets over these good times, or should I forget about him? Well, first of all, under no circumstances, give this man your baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but one baby, not both. Yeah, parent yeah. trap your children is the advice. And it's not that she like she's like I don't want to lose one of these kids, but I'm worried. Like the kids like each other. They really other, like so, each other. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm indifferent towards them, but yeah. these children like each other, so it's kind of awkward. How do I choose which one to give? <laughs> I guess maybe shared custody and like co-parenting weren't things yet either like yeah. maybe send both of them over to him for the weekend no probably not <laughs> that's so like... funny it's like i only want one no he only wants one of them oh no his logic is this you is get to keep I've one i get to keep one like everyone yeah. wins yeah this is the logic of the parent trap and it's the most horrifying <laughs> yeah. thing about that movie <laughs> I watched it this year, and I'm so confused about it as a setup. <laughs> How do you give up one of your kids? And then just not think about them? <laughs> uh, so, I, I don't know. I mean, 
And also, don't wait Betty's for the advice guy. is, I would say, partially sensible and partially bad. Um, okay, well, I- <laughs> Betty says, keep both your babies and don't even consider parting or separating yourself from either of them. Right, good. So that's the good point. The second point is, in all probability, your pleasure-loving husband will tire of his boon companions and return to his family. No. No. <laughs> no I guess, I mean... The only glimmer of hope I can see there is he wants one of the babies, so he likes the kids. So maybe, but like, <laughs> but, but uh, no, no, no. I don't wait. But yeah, yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, I'm glad she said don't give up the babies at least. Yeah, but like, how often do like philandering husbands? Be like, oh, you know what? Actually, I love my family and don't want to cheat on you anymore. I don't think you that's a thing. <laughs> on uh, on the other podcast I do, Singers Who Act, we just did a Barbara Streisand <laughs> episode. Uh, and we did uh, the movie, um, the one with where Barbara Streisand is a therapist and she has an affair with Nick Nolte, um, Prince of Tides. And oh, okay. so like Nolte, the movie opens where Nolte's wife is like, I'm having an affair. And then Nolte has to go off to New York to deal with some family stuff. And he winds up having an affair with Barbara Streisand. And spoiler alert, the wife is just like, come home. And he's like, okay. (laughs) And it's just like, like they just treat an affair like it's just like nothing. It's so wild to me. It's like, but is that what people do? Like, they just like go back to their wives like nothing happened. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I've again, never... I the think, again, I no think follow-ups. we don't get to know. No. And again, I think this is a question of Betty Vincent advocating for like the survival of this woman to be like, you have two babies. Hopefully yeah. this guy comes back to you because otherwise I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. Good luck raising them. And... Yeah. There's, there's no good answer. <laughs> yeah. Dealing with your weird husband. <laughs> so uh, I've got one last one. It's all right. Uh, from September of 1930, and it says, Dear Miss Betty, I have a friend who has been taking me out every week. I'm quite young, and this is the first time I've ever been out necking. I usually sit oh. on his knee. Am I to put my arm around his neck? I will watch this paper for advice. Thank you, Miss Betty. Want to know. I feel like this is the closest we've had to, like, a question for, like, sex advice. Yeah, no kidding. That's why like, I, that's what I, I call him got canceled. Like, How do I make out with a man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm guessing that Betty tells her just not to do the necking. Yeah, she's like, yeah. go hold some hands. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's very mean about it. She says, you oh. are very foolish to make yourself so cheap. When the real Mr. Wright comes along, it will be a pity if you've been mauled and pawed by all of the boys you tried oh, out. <laughs> gross. Don't like that. It's bad. It's such bad advice. Yeah. I feel like in a lot of these two, I mean, we're just getting the little selection here, but like, there's not a ton of like, here's what you do advice, right? It's a lot of, don't no. do this. Like, I, I have come out of this having no idea how a woman in the 1920s is supposed to show affection. The safest sex is abstinence, uh, you're you guys. not, I think. <laughs> like, how are you supposed to get uh, married? Don't look or touch a man. Yeah, and you don't want to try. Well, here's, you know, I think, the interesting thing. So there are other letters saying, like, I like these boys as friends, but I don't want to date them. Is that okay? And almost universally says, yes, it's good to have friends that are men. Okay. So you can so talk like, to boys, actually. Good. You can talk to boys. It's just where it gets to, like, dating and kissing and touching that it gets a little different. Right. But the ideas around sex were so different back then that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Not that I agree with anything she says regarding, like, making out. I There's just this feel idea like of, like, giving were... away your kisses. Oh, yeah. Like, a woman has, like, a that, finite like, pl- number of kisses over the course of her life. <laughs> <laughs> like, you might... Don't be careful. Uh... Otherwise, her lips will fall off, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you might run out. And, and the then you'll be an be old, arrested. kissless maid. <laughs> he stole all my kisses. Arrest that man. I only had 50 to give away. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave them all of him, and he's bald. <laughs> <laughs> So the last column was published on October 29th, 1930, and then it was replaced in 1933 by a column run by a woman named Virginia Vane. So we can save that for another Valentine's Day if we want to take another trip down 
um, bad relationship advice lane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, see you again next Valentine's think, Day for that. I don't know, I think... Valentine's Day. Yeah. I mean, I think the key thing with stuff like this is that it's partially for the reader as well, right? It's so that we can read them and judge them and discuss them. Absolutely. And I, I think mean, it's maybe more of that than giving people functional advice, yeah. which is yes. why we've done a full decade of the worst <laughs> advice I've ever read. <laughs> I was going to say, I've enjoyed hearing all this hundred year old drama. It's great. It really and makes. I think <laughs> it's fantastic. It brings you into perspective on your own problems. It's like, wow, I have the same problems as someone from a hundred years ago. No, not really. Yeah. No, and I was saying to Sabrina, too, like, earlier in the week. similar circumstance, but different solutions. Yeah, Yeah, I was saying, like, earlier in the week, too, that, like, I think this is the exact same reason that we go and, like, read, like, sort by controversial on, like, our relationships. Right? Mm. Like, on Reddit. Because, like, I want to hear people's terrible stories. It's fun to watch people fight over things. Yes. And also, I mean, I think to a certain extent it's establishing what is and is not normal in relationships and what that looks like. Mm, yeah. Both in, like, how someone writes in the response and the follow-up. It's establishing and then changing social norms as it goes. Yeah. So maybe there's a weird example. I read a book on um, the history of advice columns, and then I didn't use a lot of that information because it seemed excessive for a Valentine's <laughs> Day special. But there was a... There was a columnist from the States who in the 30s advised one woman to get a will, and in response to that column going out a bunch of women wrote their own wills for the first time. So, like, these advice columnists can actually have a significant impact on society and how social norms are viewed. Yeah. So they're a really interesting tool to sort of look at how dating and love and life is viewed across the years. And it can be a really hard thing to, like, ask questions about or, like, determine what those social norms are, right? Like, you're kind of expected just to know these things, right? You're expected just to know if it's okay to kiss a boy or walk arm in arm or whatever right or if going for coffee is a date or not yeah Yeah. (laughs) that was that was one that i shared with sabrina um (laughs) a few days ago that yeah uh one of my like first like dates as an adult i said yes to coffee with a boy and then went around the rest of the week because i didn't want to go on a date he was very nice i just wasn't interested and then went around the rest of the week asking my friends like hey is coffee a date (laughs) so That one's tricky. Like, I don't know, like (laughs) coffee could be a date. It could be a hang. It's like the casual, like, like you go for coffee for a meeting too. Like that's yeah. like when we talked about doing this podcast, we all went for coffee and that didn't mean anything else. And we had a weird group date. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Did you not think that was a date? Uh... (laughs) Oh, wow. I've misread this whole situation. Yeah. podcast is the most elaborate date <laughs> ploy of all time. <laughs> I knew it. Let's do hours of work. Yeah. This is our Valentine's <laughs> date right now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's a month early. Yeah. yeah. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm, very, so, I'm very smitten so with both that of that is you, what so. dating was like in Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> The vibe of this podcast is going to change so much by yeah. season two. <laughs> well, that's probably a good note to wish so all of our listeners a yeah. happy Valentine's yeah. Day. A happy Valentine. <laughs> We're dating uh, all of remember, you too. Remember, don't waste. Yeah, don't waste your kisses. <laughs> lie to your husbands mm-hmm. and don't tell anyone how much you love them because they behave better when they're being tricked. Yeah. That's what we've that's learned great today. Advice. And we should take that with us into our Valentine's Day. Excellent advice. Thanks for listening. You can follow us on social media at Facebook and Instagram at One Great History. We're on Twitter at the number one Great History. We've got a website, onegreathistory.wordpress.com. There's understandably not a lot of pictures for this episode, but you can see pictures for old episodes, look at old content, check out resources. We have links to old papers, so you can, too, peruse the old Winnipeg Tribune advice columns if you're interested. It's always very fun. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. We'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>